The commander of the Russian occupiers got drunk and decided to contact the Ukrainian armed forces soldiers on the radio. He made threats on the air, but in fact, his appeal was more like a request to stop shelling his unit. He contacted the soldiers of the 63rd Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. The defenders of Ukraine could not help but laugh and published his pathetic monologue on the internet. You've never heard anything like this before. The Muscovite commander lost his nerve after several failed assaults on the positions of the 63rd Brigade after receiving a good beating. He got drunk and contacted the UN, started complaining to our soldiers on the radio that they were fighting incorrectly. The soldiers captioned the video. According to eyewitnesses, the drunk Russian commander said that he knew that they were being listened to and that he would get to the Ukrainian armed forces positions. He also openly admitted to the atrocities that Russians are committing against military personnel on Ukrainian territory. I know you're listening to us. We're going to get you, he muttered into his walkie-talkie. Alcohol abuse among Russian soldiers has led to indiscipline, decreased operational readiness and incidents of violence and accidents, according to anecdotal evidence. Last year, the UK's Ministry of Defence claimed Russia was facing an extremely high number of incidents, crimes and deaths linked to alcohol consumption. It added that binge drinking on the front lines was tacitly accepted by Russia's top brass even during combat operations. There have been fights among soldiers, desertions and insubordination with complaints of a lack of combat readiness. Bullying, Dedovshina, too, is endemic in Putin's military machine, which has failed to modernize in the way of most Western armies. It involves hazing, physical abuse and psychological torment of junior soldiers by their seniors. In June of this year, a drunken Russian soldier in the Belgorod region ran over a car with civilians in a tank, after which the occupiers tried to escape. However, they did not think to pull off the road and were stopped by the police. Hurricane John struck Mexico's southern Pacific coast Monday night with fierce winds and heavy rainfall after strengthening from a tropical storm to major hurricane in a matter of hours. John's rapid intensification caught authorities off guard as they scrambled to update their guidance to residents and keep pace with the stronger storm. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said John had rapidly strengthened into a Category 3 hurricane and had maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour at landfall. Forecasters projected John would also likely batter nearby tourist hubs Acapulco and Puerto Escondido before turning into a tropical storm while making its way inland. The unexpected surge in strength caught scientists, authorities and residents of the area by surprise, something AccuWeather senior meteorologist Matt Benz attributed to warmer oceans, which add fuel to the hurricanes. As a result, surprise surges in hurricane strength have become increasingly common, Benz said. Things were tense in Oaxaca's coastal cities on Monday shortly after the announcement as residents and businesses were bracing themselves. After authorities met Monday afternoon to plan their response, the governments of Guerrero and Oaxaca states announced they would suspend classes in a number of coastal zones on Tuesday. Oaxaca's governor said the state government had evacuated 3,000 people and set up 80 shelters. It also said it sent out 1,000 military and state personnel to address the emergency. Benz expressed concern that the storm could slow once it hits land, leaving the storm hovering over the coastal zone, which could cause even greater damage. Through Thursday, John is expected to produce 15 to 30 centimeters of rain across coastal areas of Chiapas state with more in isolated areas. In areas along and near the Oaxaca coast to southeast Guerrero, between 25 and 50 centimeters of rain with isolated higher totals can be expected through Thursday. that rapid intensification has occurred more frequently in modern times as opposed to uh, back in historical record. Um, so that's telling us there's something going on there.
Pues ahorita estamos protegiendo los cristales del negocio para que cuando llegue el agua, el viento fuerte, que no se rompe los cristales. You know, it'll have a lingering impact beyond just the next couple of days. Uh, you're going to feel the impacts of the storm probably from the next, you know, couple of weeks to a couple of months. Firefighters in the province of Córdoba in central Argentina were trying Saturday to put out the fierce fires raging in the region for three days. Local authorities said the flames had reached homes, and many neighbors were evacuated in Los Cocos and Capilla del Monte towns. This fire was really severe, we saw desperate people, we saw houses catching fire, we saw injured people. There's a boy who got burned and suffered injuries, burns on his body. So it was very tough, said Leonardo Heredia, a member of the civil defense of the town of Los Cocos. A combination of strong winds, high temperatures, and low humidity favored the fire, which spread high flames that were difficult to control due to the weather conditions, explained Heredia. We toured the areas affected by the fires in the Punilla Valley, in the town of Capilla del Monte and surroundings, where we have evacuees, the governor of the province of Córdoba, Martín Lariora, informed through social media.